The sayings of Jesus on the cross, also called the seven last words from the cross, are seven expressions biblically attributed to Jesus during his crucifixion. Traditionally, the brief sayings have been called words. They are gathered from the four canonical gospels. Three of the sayings appear only in the Gospel of Luke and three only in the Gospel of John. The other saying appears both in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark. In Matthew and Mark, Jesus cries out to God. In Luke, he forgives his killers, reassures the penitent thief, and commends his spirit to the Father. In John, he speaks to his mother, says he thirsts, and declares the end of his earthly life. A person's final articulated words said prior to death or as death approaches generally are taken to have particular significance. These seven sayings, being last words, may provide a way to understand what was ultimately important to this man who was dying on the cross. The sparsity of sayings recorded in the biblical accounts suggests that Jesus remained relatively silent for the hours he hung there. Since the 16th century, they have been widely used in sermons on Good Friday, and entire books have been written on theological analysis of them. The seven last words from the cross are an integral part of the liturgy in the Anglican, Catholic, Protestant, and other Christian traditions. The seven sayings tradition is an example of the Christian approach to the construction of a gospel harmony in which material from different gospels is combined, producing an account that goes beyond each gospel. Several composers have set the seven last words to music. Topic seven sayings Topic The seven sayings form part of a Christian meditation that is often used during Lent, Holy Week, and Good Friday. The traditional order of the sayings is, Luke chapter 23 verse 34, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23 verse 43, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. John chapter 19 verses 26 to 27, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 and Mark chapter 15 verse 34 My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John chapter 19 verse 28, I thirst. John chapter 19 verse 30, it is finished. From the Greek to telestai, which is also translated, it is accomplished, or, it is complete, Luke chapter 23 verse 46, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Traditionally, these seven sayings are called words of one. Forgiveness, two. Salvation, three. Relationship, four. Abandonment, five. Distress, six. Triumph and seven. Reunion, as can be seen from the above list, not all seven sayings can be found in any one account of Jesus' crucifixion. The ordering is a harmonization of the texts from each of the four canonical Gospels. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, Jesus is quoted in Aramaic, shouting the fourth phrase. In Luke's Gospel, the first, second, and seventh sayings occur. The third, fifth and sixth sayings can only be found in John's Gospel. In other words, in Matthew and Mark, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Luke, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise in response to one of the two thieves crucified next to him, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, last words, in John, woman, behold your son, behold your mother, directed at Mary, the mother of Jesus, either as a self-reference, or as a reference to the beloved disciple and an instruction to the disciple himself, I thirst, just before a wetted sponge, mentioned by all the canonical gospels, is offered. It is finished last words topic 1 Father forgive them for they know not what they are doing topic Luke chapter 23 verse 34 then Jesus said Father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing This first saying of Jesus on the cross is traditionally called the word of forgiveness it is theologically interpreted as Jesus' prayer for forgiveness for the Roman soldiers who were crucifying him and all others who were involved in his crucifixion. Some early manuscripts do not include this sentence in Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Topic 2. Today you will be with me in paradise. Topic Luke chapter 23 verse 43. And he said to him Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This saying is traditionally called the word of salvation. According to Luke's Gospel, Jesus was crucified between two thieves, traditionally named Dismas and Gestas, one of whom supports Jesus' innocence and asks him to remember him when he comes into his kingdom. Jesus replies, Truly, I say to you, Amen Lego Soy Amen Lego Soi, followed with the only appearance of the word, Paradise, 
In the Gospels, Paradiso Paradiso, from the Persian Paradisa, Paradise Garden. A seemingly simple change in punctuation in this saying has been the subject of doctrinal differences among Christian groups, given the lack of punctuation in the original Greek texts. Catholics and most Protestant Christians usually use a version which reads, Today you will be with me in paradise. This reading assumes a direct voyage to heaven and has no implications of purgatory. On the other hand, some Protestants who believe in soul sleep have used a reading which emphasizes, I say to you today, leaving open the possibility that the statement was made today, but arrival in heaven may be later. Topic. Three. Behold your son, behold your mother. Topic. John chapter 19 verses 26 to 27. Jesus saw his own mother, and the disciple standing near whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, he took his mother into his family. This statement is traditionally called, The Word of Relationship and in it Jesus entrusts Mary, his mother, into the care of the disciple whom Jesus loved. Methodist minister Adam Hamilton's 2009 interpretation, Jesus looked down from the cross to see his mother standing nearby. As far as we know, only one of the twelve apostles was there at the foot of the cross, the disciple whom Jesus loved, usually identified as John. Naked and in horrible pain, he thought not of himself but was concerned for the well-being of his mother after his death. This shows Jesus' humanity and the depth of love he had for his mother and the disciple into whose care he entrusted her. <laughs> 4. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. Around the ninth hour, Jesus shouted in a loud voice, saying, Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani? Which is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark chapter 15 verse 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus shouted in a loud voice, Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani? Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is the only saying that appears in more than one gospel, and is a quote from Psalms 22-1. This saying is taken by some as an abandonment of the Son by the Father. Other theologians understand the cry as that of one who was truly human and who felt forsaken. Put to death by his foes, very largely deserted by his friends, he may have felt also deserted by God. Others point to this as the first words of Psalm chapter 22 and suggest that Jesus recited these words, perhaps even the whole psalm that he might show himself to be the very being to whom the words refer, so that the Jewish scribes and people might examine and see the cause why he would not descend from the cross, namely, because this very psalm showed that it was prophetized that he would suffer these things. Theologian Frank Stagg points to what he calls a mystery of Jesus' incarnation. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 he who died at Golgotha Calvary is one with the Father, that God was in Christ, and that at the same time he cried out to the Father. In Aramaic, the phrase was, is rendered. Lee Lee L. Spoutney. While the nails in the wrists are putting pressure on the large median nerve, and the severely damaged nerve causes excruciating pain. The Lamb of God experiences the abandonment of the soul by God, a deeply excruciating pain that is the essence of eternal condemnation in hell. Demonic powers were given the transitory power to physically and psychically torment the Son of God and eventually to kill him, and like in the Lord's Prayer he asks God the Father to deliver away the evil one, the devil. Topic 5. I thirst. Topic. John chapter 19 verse 28. He said, I thirst. This statement is traditionally called the word of distress and is compared and contrasted with the encounter of Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4 verses 4 to 26. As in the other accounts, the Gospel of John says Jesus was offered a drink of sour wine, adding that this person placed a sponge dipped in wine on a hyssop branch and held it to Jesus' lips. Hyssop branches had figured significantly in the Old Testament and in the Book of Hebrews. This statement of Jesus is interpreted by John as fulfillment of the prophecy given in Psalm chapter 69, verse 21, cf. 
Psalm chapter 22 verse 15, hence the quotation from John's Gospel includes the comment, to fulfill the scriptures. Topic. 6. It is finished. Topic. John chapter 19 verse 30 Jesus said, It is finished. This statement is traditionally called, The Word of Triumph, and is theologically interpreted as the announcement of the end of the earthly life of Jesus, in anticipation for the resurrection, Adam Hamilton writes, These last words are seen as a cry of victory, not of dereliction. Jesus had now completed what he came to do. A plan was fulfilled, a salvation was made possible, a love shown. He had taken our place. He had demonstrated both humanity's brokenness and God's love. He had offered himself fully to God as a sacrifice on behalf of humanity. As he died, it was finished. With these words, the noblest person who ever walked the face of this planet, God in the flesh, breathed his last. The verse has also been translated as, It is consummated. Topic 7. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Topic Luke chapter 23 verse 46 And speaking in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. From Psalm chapter 31 verse 5, this saying, which is an announcement and not a request, is traditionally called the word of reunion, and is theologically interpreted as the proclamation of Jesus joining God the Father in heaven. Hamilton has written that, when darkness seemed to prevail in life, it takes faith even to talk to God, even if it is to complain to him. These last words of Jesus from the cross show his absolute trust in God, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. This has been termed a model of prayer for everyone when afraid, sick, or facing one's own death. It says in effect, I commit myself to you, O God. In my living and in my dying, in the good times and in the bad, whatever I am and have, I place in your hands, O God, for your safekeeping. Topic. Theological interpretations Topic. The last words of Jesus have been the subject of a wide range of Christian teachings and sermons, and a number of authors have written books specifically devoted to the last sayings of Christ. Priest and author Timothy Radcliffe states that in the Bible, seven is the number of perfection, and he views the seven last words as God's completion of the circle of creation and performs analysis of the structure of the seven last words to obtain further insight. Topic: Other interpretations and translations. Topic. The saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? is generally given in transliterated Aramaic with a translation originally in Greek after it. This phrase is the opening line of Psalm chapter 22, a psalm about persecution, the mercy and salvation of God. It was common for people at this time to reference songs by quoting their first lines. In the verses immediately following this saying, in both Gospels, the onlookers who hear Jesus cry understand him to be calling for help from Elijah Elia. The slight differences between the two Gospel accounts are most probably due to dialect. Matthew's version seems to have been more influenced by Hebrew, whereas Mark's is perhaps more colloquial. The phrase could be either Li li elv zibni Eli Eli lama azavtani, or Li li elm spoutni Eli Eli lama sabachthani, or Li li elm spoutni Elihi Elihi lama sabachthani The Aramaic word sabachthani is based on the verb sabach, to allow, to permit, to forgive, and to forsake, with the perfect tense ending t second person singular, you, and the object suffix ani first person singular, me. A. T. Robertson noted that the so-called Gospel of Peter 1.5 preserves this saying in a Docetic Cerinthian form, My power, my power, thou hast forsaken me. Topic. Historicity of the sayings Topic. James Dunn considers the seven sayings weakly rooted in tradition and sees them as a part of the elaborations in the diverse retellings of Jesus' final hours. 
Dunn, however, argues in favor of the authenticity of the Mark – Matthew saying in that by presenting Jesus as seeing himself forsaken it would have been an embarrassment to the early church, and hence would not have been invented. Geza Vermes, states that the first saying from Matthew and Mark is a quotation from Psalm chapter 22, and is therefore occasionally seen as a theological and literary device employed by the writers. According to Vermes, attempts to interpret the expression as a hopeful reference to scripture provide indirect evidence of its authenticity. Leslie Holden, on the other hand, states that Luke may have deliberately excluded the Matthew, Mark saying from his gospel because it did not fit in the model of Jesus he was presenting. Topic. See also Topic. Musical settings of the seven last words of Christ Stations of the Cross Aramaic of Jesus Crucifixion of Jesus Life of Jesus in the New Testament Three Hours Agony Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. The Reader's Encyclopedia, 2nd edition 1965, publisher Thomas Y. Crowell Co., New York, editions 1948, 1955. Library of Congress Catalog Card No. 65-12510, pp. 917-918. Topic. External links Topic. The Seven Last Words of Christ, Rev. Dr. Mark D. Roberts, Pateos The Seven Last Words of Christ, Free Scores in the Choral Public Domain Library CoralWiki.